What's up everybody? We're back with another installment of Why Do I Own This? A series of videos where I take a good, hard look at my vinyl record collection and give an account as to why I own these physical objects. And to that end, I've put a link in the description section below to my Discogs account that has a up-to-date index of all the vinyl records that I own. You can check that list out, drop it in the comments section below, and take me to task. Let me know which vinyl records I need to answer for. And of course, we'll have a good time talking about music along the way. My name's Adam McDormand, and this is Medium Quality. Last night, I went to see Me Without You, that's the shirt, for what I think is the 10th and final time. At the time of this recording, Me Without You is currently on their farewell tour. And so I thought, what better way to reflect on, well, the experience I had last night and my experience really enjoying Me Without You as a band than to talk about their album, Catch For Us The Foxes. This is the 2004 sophomore release from the band. Me Without You is a band that is difficult to describe because there's nothing that sounds quite like Me Without You, particularly because they have this iconic vocal sound provided by lead singer frontman Aaron Weiss. It's like post-hardcore, moving toward indie and art rock. Uh, it's heavy, but it's poetic and melodic. It's a, a real special sonic treat. I absolutely love this album. And this is the 2019 remastered release of this album. And I went out of my way to get what they referred to as the cinnamon splatter colored vinyl, just because it pairs so nicely with the visual aesthetic of the album art. It is an absolutely phenomenal and beautiful package for an album that absolutely should not have made it through QA. What little consensus there is on the internet about this release seems to regard this as a really poor album in terms of quality control. And I gotta say, I agree. My copy of Catch For Us The Foxes is one of the worst records that I own. It is noisy, it has pops and clicks, uh, pretty much all the way through side one and through as much of side two as I could get. When I can tune out the noise from the physical defects on this release, which to be fair takes a lot of work, what I hear is a very competently produced mix of an album from 2004 that has been faithfully preserved on the vinyl mastering. The problem is the noise makes this album pretty much unlistenable. So that begs the question, why do I own this? Why am I holding on to a copy of an album that is basically unlistenable? And to be honest, I'm just torn. I am torn because I like having the object. I like being able to pick it up. I like being able to thumb through the lyrics and think about what they mean. And yet, it just doesn't sound good. It just, you know, thinking back, many of us were really anticipating a 10th anniversary reissue in 2014 for this album. In fact, the, I think the band had even announced it on Twitter, but they obviously did that prematurely because they don't have the distribution rights. There was some legal entanglements that prevented them from releasing this album. And the bummer is that by the time they actually did, this is the version we get. Now there was a second release alongside this one that was a deluxe 45 RPM uh, double LP release of this album. Uh, I don't have that. I know a few people who do and I would love to find out if that version of this album is better, if the quality control, because it was supposedly deluxe, uh, ended up being better and maybe it sounds good and it's listenable. You know, if that's the case, then I would love to keep an eye out for it. But until then, I'm probably going to hold on to the version that I've got simply because it's a part of the collection. It's a part of the discography. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's a real tough one. What would you guys do? Drop into the comments and let me know. What would you do if there was an album that you absolutely loved 
but the only version that you could get your hands on was one that was borderline unlistenable. Would you get it? Would you hold on to it? Anyways, that's going to do it for this episode, guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And until next time, guys, keep spinning that good stuff. What a time to be alive.